When it comes to building applications, one of the hardest things to do is structure them, making sure they are as maintainable and scalable as possible. And everyone makes the mistake of not structuring their applications correctly, from junior to even senior developers. Fortunately, there is a concept called collocation, which automatically helps you a lot in keeping a maintainable and well-organized structure. For this, I created an application using the T3 stack, which scaffolds a Next.js application for you with Tailwind, TypeScript, TRPC, ORMs, or even authentication pre-configured. Now, what I'm going to show you applies to any application, whether it's a backend API service with Express or Vanilla React, or even if it's an entirely different language. To start things off, the first thing I suggest to configure is a path alias. So instead of using relative imports, so let's say you have a button component under components slash UI, and then to import it, we have to come out of this directory, so the pages directory, because currently we're in this index.tsx file, go over to components, then UI, and then the button. So you would say dot dot slash, and then we go over to components, UI, and then button. But with a path alias configured, we can simply shorten this to be dollar sign. So this maps over to the source directory. And then we can simply start from here and dig down. To do this, you can go over to your tsconfig.json file and add this path's property where you can map the dollar sign or whatever you want to your root directory. So everything, all modules under source, where everything outside of the source directory should only be for configuration files, nothing more. The next step is to embrace collocation. Suppose we have a page blog, and this blog page has a lot of blog posts and you need to create components pertaining solely to this page. So a blog title component, you have a blog description component, and so on and so forth. What most people do is create a parallel directory to this directory. So inexperienced people would create a components directory, then a shared directory, and then declare all of their components here and then make sure to only use these components for the blog. But this is terrible. Please don't do this. And the reason is because now you need to search for this directory and for each component and make sure that the two are synchronized. What if you were to add components for other pages for the contact page? Now you're mixing potentially hundreds of components making it a maintainability nightmare. So other people came up with creating parallel directories with the same name as where you're using these modules. So instead of doing this, you'd create a directory called blog, which has the same name as this one, as this page. And then you would move these two components. So now it's technically more organized than the preview solution, but it isn't the best. Because again, you need to keep track of where those modules are. And what if you had a directory for utility code pertaining solely to this block page? Now you would come over to the utils directory, create another one called blog, and declare all utility code for the blog page. And as we can see, this is just a nightmare for maintainability. And what about the styles? You do the same. So now everything is separated, lives in entirely different directories, but they are all somehow related. Fortunately, collocation exists, which means placing modules as close as possible. So the solution would be to create a shared directory, so page lib under the page, and then you'd move the components. So you'd create a subdirectory called components, You'd move these two here, then another one called utils, and then you'd move this utility so you could have um, create blog.ts file. But there is a problem. Next.js maps 
all files to a page. So if you were to move all of these modules under the blog page, now you would be able to access these two as pages. So slash blog, slash page lib, slash components, slash blog title and blog description. So what can we do here? Well, fortunately, you can configure this behavior in the Next.js configuration file, where you can remap these pages to only be treated as pages if these files have a specific page extension. So we can say page extensions and page.csx and page.cs for API routes. Now, by doing this, these are no longer considered pages. So you would need to change all of these to be index.page, then app.page.csx, index.page, for them to be considered actual pages. And this is great because not only are you using collocation where you can place all of your utility code and modules as close as possible, but you're also making it very clear what a page is and what isn't a page. So we know this is a page index.page.csx and we know that these two are components. So keep this in mind, place everything as close as possible. What about utility code you will share everywhere? It's okay to place them under a global directory. In this case, this class names function, which all components and pages might use, we can simply create a utils directory and declare it there. That's fine. So now you're creating some sort of hierarchy where everything at the top level is not particularly collocated. And as deeper as you dive, the more the collocation is present. And that's the idea of collocation. There's no good reason to place, say, a component all across another directory if it's only going to be used within this page. But what about files themselves? Can we also create even more collocation? And the answer is yes. The more collocation, the easier it is to follow a project. So if I come here to components, then UI, and then come here to this dialog component, as we can see, we have a lot of components within this component and we're exporting all of them individually. This means that if we wanted to use a dialogue, we'd need to bring over the dialogue in a separate import, then the dialogue trigger, the dialogue content, and so on and so forth. So how can we simplify this? Well, first of all, embrace collocation, but in actual code, and that's using entities. And we know that objects are entities. We map a key to a value. So instead of, let me show you an example, say we have a dialogue. So we can say dialogue and we import this one. Then dialogue trigger, we have to import this one. Then the button. So this is fine, right? So open, we can say as child. And then the dialogue content itself, we import this component then the dialogue title, and so on and so forth. So as we can see, we're importing everything, and that's not particularly bad, but it's not the best developer experience. Because what if I didn't know what the name of this component was, and I thought it was something along the lines of dialogue heading? Now I need to go over to this component, look up the name, and be, oh, it's dialogue title, not dialogue heading. So for this, don't do this. This is not the best developer experience. What I would do instead is use object assign. So const dialog is equal to, and I'll come here to this property, and I'll simply say object.assign, I paste it, and then I pass in an object that I want to assign to this one. So we can say the trigger, the content overlay, well, everything that pertains to the dialogue, which lives within the single entity. And now we can export the dialogue instead. Now I can come back here, delete this, this is not used. And now if I come back here, I can simply get rid of all of these import statements and simply say dialogue.trigger like an object. 
So now we're using collocation, but for our actual application code, not only for the structure of our application. This means that now you can just come here, type dialog, thud, and you can find all of the properties or rather all of the components pertaining to this one. And you also save time importing and exporting every single component. So that's one thing. And the other one is what about all of these components that live within a single file? Can we do anything about this? The answer is yes. What you can do, and what I would recommend actually, is to create a dialog directory and simply move this file over to this directory. And then we can create subdirectories. So we can say we have the header. So header, we know that header is for dialog, very self-explanatory. And then we can come here and define header.csx. And now I can come here, copy this, paste it here. Then we can export this component, delete this here, come back here and import it. But there is a problem. If we follow this structure, and come back here, as we can see, we're importing from header slash header. And this is bad, we're duplicating header, and that makes sense. So what can we do about this? Well, we can create a root file, so index, and we can say export everything. So all named exports from dot slash header. And now I can come back here and get rid of this last slash header. And you do this for every single subcomponent. And you also need to do the same for the dialogue itself. So export all from dot slash dialogue. So now you can still import the dialogue as we have done here. So remove this slash dialogue and all components live within this single entity. However, we have a small problem. We have this button component floating around while this dialogue component has its own directory. Now you could leave it like this, but I would prefer to be consistent. So if you're going to have some components within their own directories, you might create all components within their own directories. But it has the benefit of if you're going to add or create subcomponents for a base component like the dialog, you can simply create the directories right away. No need to refactor everything to this structure. So now you can come here to UI, create a directory button, then place this inside, create an index file, export everything from dot slash button, and then you can get rid of this nested path. And now, as I said, if you're going to add more subcomponents, you can simply come here and say, we're going to have a revert button. So revert button react.fc children react dot node and then we get the children and we simply return a simple button and this should actually be dot csx and now we can export this come back here to this button and then we can do the same so we can actually rename this to be root. So the root component and then export const button is equal to object.assign. We assign to the root these properties. In this case, the revert button. So revert button. And now we can add this index. So export everything from this file. We can come back here and get rid of this nested path. And now we can come to a page and simply reference the revert button as button dot revert, as simple as that. Now, as I've mentioned multiple times, you should really start getting into collocation and using it as much as you can. It doesn't matter if it's a small project with only two pages, or to API routes or whatever, just keep applying this concept. The more you do it, the easier it will become and your project will be much more organized. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. See you later.